hold nothing against the current players. They are better athletes than us, but guess what? They didn't have to eat at McDonald's for lunch. <laughs> they have lunch brought to them. This stadium here is made the way it is because of the guys who played in the 70s and 80s and early 90s. It's not, they didn't invent this game. And, that, and that's the problem that the Hall of Famers have with the league the way it is. They come in and Roger Goodell says, oh, we, we think so much of you Hall of Famers. And, the, and I told Roger, I said, Roger, half the Hall of Famers are multimillionaires. Half the guys are so ticked off. My pension is $1,247 a month for 13 years in that league. And then uh, the mayor Smith said, we're going to give them a legacy fund. We're going to make, because they're legends, we're going to give them a legacy fund. My legacy fund came to $1,104. So now I have a grand total of my pension coming to $28,000 a year for the next 10 years with no cost of living increase and no medical. Well, I'd like to see Roger Goodell and Damara Smith live on that when they're in their 50s and 60s and then have their wife's worry. Is this guy going to be okay? Is he going to wake up and not be a goofball right. like all of his friends? Yeah. And that's the problem. And we cannot get this out to the American public. You, you mentioned families. How hard is it on your, your wife and your kids, uh, you know, going through this and the potential of it getting worse down I'll the I'll tell you a perfect example because you get real emotional about stuff. My grandson's coming in town, okay? They know that, my kids know that I'm fanatical on staying in shape. And, you know, my son says, don't say anything to Cole if he's not in quite the shape you think an 11-year-old boy should be in. What kid would call their father and tell him that? Right. I go, Todd, come on, man, I know that. <laughs> he goes, yeah, but I know how you get. Don't work him out. <laughs> Don't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's a funny thing, but right. what kids would call their father and tell him that? That's, I'm 61. Right. I, you know, I got a brain. <laughs> but they're, they're, they know how you get because you, you do things like trigger, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, it's crazy. It might like you lose your keys, and all of a sudden you think, dang, I lost them again, or I did this. Then all, it's always question, is, is, he, is this the time he's going to slip? Is this mm -hmm. what's happening? And that's what happens to former players, and they all tell you the same thing. They, they go, God, I got to the end of the street, and I didn't know what I was doing yeah. here and where to turn, why I was even here. And I put two, two of my best friends in the grave, uh, uh, Mike Webster and Coach Ringo, and I said Coach Ringo's eulogy, and he died from dementia. So it's just—it's not just the symptoms you're experiencing; it's the fear of the symptoms that what's may, coming down the yeah. road. What's coming down the road? Because and here's mm -hmm. what they'll say: Hey, how's Joe doing? That they'll say to my wife, who's known me our whole life. At this point, he's doing good. Mm -hmm. So I, I, she I has feel, the same fear. She has the same fear exactly because she sees her friends. What's happening? Then every year you go back to the Hall of Fame, two, three, four guys die. Two, three, four guys, yeah, man, he, he, you have their wife following him around in the hall because he can't travel alone anymore. Mm -hmm. That's reality. That's, what, that's what's going to happen to us unless, by the grace of God, I, you know, we're all going to die. Nobody's getting out of here alive. I know that. But you don't want to have it a burden on your family especially with no medical how we have it. Right. One last question for you. I've got a, um, I've got a nine-year-old son. For the past two summers, I've let him play flag football, go to flag football camp. What's your advice to me when he comes to me this, this summer and says, you know, I've, I've aged out of flag football, Daddy. I want to sign up for regular football. He'll be 10. What would, what would your advice to me be? I have five grandchildren, five grandsons, four, four girls. Hopefully they won't play. But, <laughs> but the five boys, I always tell my daughter, I don't want them playing. Come on. I worry too much because I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't know what I've seen. That's why I'm asking. I'd be very hesitant, mm -hmm. very hesitant until they clean this whole thing up. And th there's ways. It's getting better all the time. And they'll come up with something to make it even more safe. Uh, the best one would, and then we'd see how many kids want to play with no face mask. <laughs> and you say, well, I can't hear you because my nose is over here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, really, I... I that, to me, would clean, the, clean it up immediately. Leather helmets and no, no face masks? No leather helmets. you, you got great helmets. They're great uh -huh. protection. But take the face mask off. Then you're going to quit putting your face in there. And you're going to put, your head's going to slide to the side. You're going hit, to hit the ball instead of the, somebody's chest. And that, I think that would do it. All right. Well, 
For Joe DeLamalure and Matt Crossman, I'm Stephen Levine. Joe, thanks again for taking the time well, to come you. in. Great I to have get, you. I kind of get passionate about this and didn't let Matt ask enough questions, but I've asked he was great. already. Yeah, well, you, you can only take so much, Matt Crossman. There I you must go. Be honest. But it's been great, and thank you for giving us exposure. Absolutely. Thanks for watching.